All right, today we're going to do two buttons. We're going to do a regular old toggle button, and we're going to do a spin button. First of all, let's look at the GTK manual, which is available uh, online. And in the GTK button hierarchy, you'll notice at the very top here is radio button. Then we, radio button is a check button. Check button is a toggle button. A toggle button is a button, and so forth. Uh, what that means is um, these have additional features as you go further down. So it, and when we looked at the radio buttons, the radio buttons are, they're obviously toggle buttons because when you click the different buttons, this is, of course, doesn't perform live when you're on the Glade uh, thing. But um, when you, they're toggle buttons because they go on and off, all right? But they're more than toggle buttons in that they're grouped. They have this grouping attribute um, that goes with them. Uh, and where is the grouping attribute? There we go. Uh, it doesn't apply to the first one because the first one's not grouped uh, with anyone else. It's the others that are grouped with it. You can see the grouping here, radio one. That button <coughs> three is grouped with button one. Button two is grouped with um, button one. Uh, button one is, of course, not grouped with anybody. It's its own button and so on. So um, these are, in fact, toggle buttons, but they have something extra associated with them, which is the grouping. On the other hand, um, a check button uh, is a toggle button because when you check it, it it's toggling on and off. Um, but it's uh, it's got an extra feature. It's got its check box and so forth. Beneath that, you have an actual toggle button, which I've, al I've already done these here. I've already pulled them in to try to save some time, get things moving a little more quickly. But here is a regular toggle button. So looking back at the hierarchy, you see, radio button is the most refined. It's got the most features. It's got the grouping. Um, it is a check button because it does check on and off. It's a circular check, but it's a check. Uh, then we have the toggle button. A regular check button is, is a check button, of course, but they're all toggle buttons because they do toggle back and forth. And a toggle button is, in fact, a button. So there is your hierarchy. It's is why these things have a certain degree of similarity because they're refinements of the underlying concept of a button. And here is our basic button up at the top here, which has an icon in it um, instead of text. All right, the toggle button, which I added. Well, I gave it the name Toggle 1. And where did I get it? I got it from Control and um, where is Toggle Button? These are not particularly al alphabetic in here. There it is, Toggle Button. So I, um, I dragged that over. Um, and I put it in, in the place there. Um, I've moved it to a location. Uh, in terms of common signaling, there I didn't change anything here. It's all the same. In terms of uh, the signal, uh, the signal is, again, it's the same signal as we really had for check button and for radio button. It's on toggle one toggled. Uh, toggled has been our signal for all of these. Um, and it's trying to... Um, I have no idea why it does it, because I clicked up there. It, it somehow added toggle button, and it thinks I'm trying to drag it, but it's stopped now. It's um, Glade is a wor work in progress. Sometimes it behaves a little odd. You know, sometimes it crashes. Um, make sure you keep a backup. Anyway, um, so you get the toggle button. Um, the toggle button, um, uh, I wonder why it's trying to do that. But anyway... Um, but we've got it's toggle one. It's got uh, the text in it. Oh, let's put it, make it just toggle button and so forth. So there it is, and it's going to have um, it's going to have the signal uh, when toggle button one toggled. Now the other one here, which is uh, uh, is interesting, is a spin button. This is a spin button. Now the spin buttons are down here. GTK spin button. I dragged this over. Maybe it'll think I'm a spin button now. Yeah, it, it clings to this idea um, that I last clicked. Anyway, um, the spin button has been brought over. It's been given the name Spin One. Uh, it, uh, it, I have activated no signals. I can, but I have not. Uh, common area, I didn't change anything. It's the way it is. Well, I changed the height and width so it's minimum size. If um, it, I think it came up with a, a, a larger size, but. And I adjusted its location. All right, back to the first one. Yeah, I gave it an ID of spin one. And then you see this thing called adjustment. Adjustment. How did I do that? Well, I went to this here. And you notice down here where it says new? I had clicked new. And that created an adjustment, adjustment one. It created the adjustment. It gave it its name. And it's checked. 
I'm not going to do it again because I've already done it. But when you click New, you'll get something called Adjustment 1. So I'll just say Cancel. Uh, the Adjustment, you'll notice, is up here on the top. There is the Adjustment. Adjustment 1 is at the top of your... Um, it's outside your window. It's, it's really just a table. It's an XML table. What it is are the values of the Spin button. Now, what happens with the Spin button? When I uh, click plus, the value in here will increment. When I click minus, the value will decrement. Anywhere in here, if I rotate the uh, mouse wheel, it'll go up or down. It, uh, so where does it get its values? Where, what is its max? What is its min? What is its increment? That's what the adjustment is for. Um, the minimum value, it is a floating point value. Uh, is 0.00. .00. Maximum is 100.00. Those are the defaults. You can set them if you want. The increment is by one. Um, I don't know what page increment and page size are. Um, I, I, I've never used them. I don't know what they are. Um, the thing most people are interested in is the step increment, the minimum, and the maximum. All right. So that's adjustment one. And that are the parameters. It's applied to spin one. Spin one has this adjustment attached to it. Now you can set the adjustment in code as well in your C code, but you can set it here um, and you can modify it, of course, in your C code. It's probably easier to set it here. All right, so there are the buttons um, I've added, which is a regular toggle button, which has a name toggle one, and we'll have a signal called toggle one toggled, and we have a um, and we have a spin button uh, whose name is spin one. Now the, the business of spin one, I have no signals. I have set it up such that um, if I click uh, this button, then it will read what's in the spin button and write it to the label. So in other words, uh, that's one of the common ways of doing it, is you have a spin button, people can adjust it, and then when you need to use it, you click another button, it reads the content of the spin button and does whatever you're going to do. In my case, I just write it to the label. Um, you can, however, with signals, every time it changes value, um, it, every time it, it changes value because somebody um, did a plus or a minus or, or a mouse scroll wheel, you can get a signal. And that would be the signal right there. So if you want to get it every time someone changes it, that's where you would go. All right, so we have the um, we have two new buttons, and now let's look at the code. Uh, again, the code has been already written. It's not um, not. Uh, oops, uh, am I in the right place? Yes. Um, again, I've used the same name, uh, Part One, not C, even though it's no longer Part One. Um, okay, there is the toggle button, toggle one. There is um, spin one. They're widgets. Uh, you declare them just the same as others. Then down here in the builder area, um, toggle one is pulled out in the same way. I gave the pointer the same name as the name it has in, in the XML file. You don't have to, but it's probably easier if you do. Um, they don't have to have the same name, but probably a good idea. And there's where spin one is pulled out. Okay, let's go down and look at the toggle. Um, on toggle one toggle, this is going to look like all the others which were toggled up above. Um, this is what happens when you just click the toggle button. Uh, it will uh, call back to this function here. In the function, I do the same thing as I did in the previous one because everybody else was a toggle button underneath. And so now I'm at the base, the actual an actual toggle button. But yeah, I find out if it's active or inactive. Uh, the same function, uh, GTK toggle button get active. And I pass the button down, cast to be a toggle button. Because it, um, it's coming in as a check button. Well, I don't know why it came in as a check button. But anyway, um, I don't know why it came in as a check button. But nonetheless, uh, because I copied it from up above, I should, I should have said toggle button here. Why don't we uh, change that? And that'll probably cause an error. But um, Okay, now, now the casting is, is irrelevant. I could drop the casting because it is the type in question. And so get rid of the cast. Cast wouldn't, do, wouldn't have any effect. It wouldn't hurt anything, and it wouldn't do anything either. All right, so I get the, I get the truth value back. If, it, if, if it's true, it's active. I write to uh, label one at that toggle one is active. If it's um, inactive, in the other case, I write to, uh, to uh, label one that it's not active. All right, um, now what about the spin button? 
since the spin button does not have a function in here, even though it's active, you can see on the original button, the button which presently has a um, an icon of a floppy disk in it, meaninglessly, but then you can put any icon up there you want. Um, here, it, I've changed this. Instead, up here, what I'm doing is I'm going to, if you click on that button, it's going to read the contents of the spin button. So I have a temporary character string of 128 characters, and there is what I get the value of the uh, in the spin uh, is that I um, it comes back as a G double which is double but it is a um, GTK version of it which is all which is the same as a regular double but I get and I declare val and I re get from the function GTK spin button get value uh, casting the thing to be a spin button spin one um, which uh, it's a widget, so you have to cast it. Um, it's originally declared as GTK widget, so it, even though it is a, obviously a spin button, but it was declared GTK widget, so you have to cast it to GTK spin button. Um, and I get back the value, and then I do an S print F uh, from the value which I cast to integer. I suppose I should put a space in there. Uh, casting it to integer uh, makes it an integer. Um, and the text uh, which I'm writing to this temporary string, that's what sprintf does. So I'm writing to that string, not to the output, but writing to the string spin equals percent sign d, and of course that will convert um, the integer value of val into an integer. And you'll, the integer will be inserted at this point, point in, the, uh, in the character string. And then I write to, the, um, to label 1, um, the character string that's in temp. So I should see the value which is in um, the spin button at that point. Okay, let's see if I've screwed things up. Uh, uh, compile. And so far so good. And there we are. Um, this is what it looks like at the moment. This is not very decorative, but you can decorate and move things and put colors and bunny rabbits and so forth on here to make it look nice. I'm just looking at the um, content. The toggle button, um, you see that's what the toggle button does. It turns off and on. So did the check button really, but you know the check button has a little X in it. Uh, toggle button is slightly different stylistically. Okay, here is the spin button. And if I start hitting the plus sign or hitting the minus sign, or now I'm going to do the scroll wheel. You may be hearing it in the background. And the scroll, well, as long as the mouse is over it, it will scroll forward and backwards. All right, so we'll leave it there at 40. If I click this button, there it is. Spin is equal to 40. It went in and read the spin button and wrote the information to the, to the label. Now, of course, what you do with the information is your problem in the code. You could take that information and you could... Um, you know, it could be a, it could be some kind of an audio setting, or um, who knows, whatever whatever you've got a value, a number numeric value that's been set that you want to use to control something, um, which you would do inside that function. Do remember, once you're in those functions, don't start calculating um, pi to the last digit because you need to return to GTK um, so that the system doesn't uh, lock up. Um, it it is still running in the background, but um, keep what what's going on there. Um, as minimal as possible, you know, either that or detach into a um, in, into a uh, forked process. Um, be careful of fork processes. If you do fork processes out, even though they're copies of the main uh, process, um, any changes in the main process to status of the widgets is not reflected in the forked process because they're now a separate data space. If you want to share them, you have to use shared memory, and we'll do a shared memory example. Uh, later on, but um, when you fork, remember it, it, all those things are independent and different. They're not the same as the as the original, and you'll get all sorts of weird errors if you start um, manipulating the widgets from a forked process uh, if the widgets are not shared in shared memory. So anyway, um, there it is. Um, so now we've got a collection of buttons. We've got radio buttons. We've got check buttons. We've got buttons ordinaire. We've got toggle buttons, and we've got um, spin buttons. We're getting someplace, hopefully.